We are at the beginning of a new era for the future exploration and commercialization of space. First, it will be the Moon, and from there, Mars and the rest of the solar system. I've always been fascinated by space exploration, but at the same time troubled by its multiple implications. Historically, human exploration has led to an aggressive exploitation of people, land and resources. This ongoing colonization process has shaped the unfair world we live in today. So how can we make sure we stop perpetuating the same old colonial patterns? When I was appointed artist in residence at the European Space Agency, I thought it was a unique opportunity to make a bold statement, to rethink, as human beings, what do we really need to take with us on this space journey? And perhaps, even more importantly, what should we leave behind? As a privileged white male individual, born and raised in Europe, I grew up in a world where Western art, science, and technology are presumed superior over every other form of knowledge. However, visiting many museums and their vast collections, products of our colonial heritage, I was introduced to a wide range of cultures and unique ways to understand the world we live in. Humanity's greatest achievement was not landing on the moon, but our cultural diversity, the rituals, beliefs, and knowledge woven within it. This rich legacy does not belong in the past, but is very much alive, sometimes even thriving. We rarely talk about cultural, ethical, or even spiritual matters when discussing space exploration, but I believe it's precisely culture that will give us a purpose in the future. Through my artistic practice, I'm learning to appreciate multiple cultural dimensions without the nostalgia or condescension that historically has been projected upon these cultures, their knowledge and their significance. This is Kim Kum Hwa. Korea's most iconic shaman who passed last year. I met King Kum Hwa at her shrine in Gangwa Island, where I witnessed her last ritual, a celebration to bless her 70th anniversary as a shaman and to prepare her departure to the spirit world. Dating back to prehistoric times, Korean shamanism has remained a resilient form of spiritual practice and a source of empowerment for many women. This is Jong Sung Do, the shaman of the people. During a ceremony that lasted several days and nights, I remember bowing to her, surrounded by blades and colorful costumes and offerings. Everyday objects were being elevated, acquiring a new dimension right in front of my eyes. I saw her becoming a god. Her body transformed through dance, prayer, and ritual. What's interesting is that despite their position of power, Korean shamans remain graceful, humble human beings. Through these women, I could clearly see the power within ancient forms of knowledge, the role our cultures play in maintaining a fragile cosmic balance. This is Don Ramon, a local healer from the Center for Indigenous Arts in Veracruz, Mexico, where Totonac culture is being taught to future generations. The center's director, Humberto Garcia, was proud describing an educational model where disciplines like art, communication, or medicine are not independent but entangled with each other. Totonac Cosmovision revolves around this 
ever-changing, interconnected dimension. There is a natural rhythm that infuses every activity here, be it cooking or weaving or healing. Nothing is trivial or decorative. Every gesture, every action has a meaning. These traditions, beliefs and rituals, they're far from being immobile. They're the result of thousands of years of practice and a painful regenerative process. These are unique pieces of wisdom we must definitely bring with us into the future. And this is what I'm doing to make that happen. I want to challenge our current model of space colonization and I've decided to start with a big gesture. To recognize the moon as a universal symbol of rebirth and renewal. As part of the European Space Agency's plans to support a permanent human presence on the moon, I'm proposing to build the Moon Temple, a future space for diverse cultural projections, traditions, and scientific research. The Moon Temple will stand on the rim of the Shackleton Crater a gigantic impact crater featuring peaks of eternal light and perpetual darkness. Its design takes advantage of lunar microgravity, the use of local resources, and the complex celestial mechanics that operate on the south pole of the moon. Sheltered in its interior, we can find traces from an intriguing new material culture. A series of objects made with moon dust and rare aerospace materials, symbolizing humanity's ancestral wisdom and all its complexity. These masks, vessels, and other ritual artifacts, they're powerful objects that imply deep personal transformations, sometimes even becoming a bridge to distant worlds. They represent the vast diversity embedded in the human experience. These objects carry within them thousands of stories yet to be written. Some provide protection, while others relate to the harsh conditions that people will endure inside our planet. But even if these objects come from a place far away from here, we can still recognize a familiar human quality within them. The Moon Temple celebrates the Moon as the measure of all things. It is a monument to humanity's reason and imagination. It represents our chance to bring together once again science, art and ritual. This might be a personal, even utopian vision for our interplanetary future. But perhaps through these utopian exercises, we can break free from many of our prejudices here on Earth. Because we need more diverse personal narratives for our future. A future when we don't turn our backs to our cultures and the role they've played in shaping who we are today. A future that does not perpetuate the survival of the most privileged at the expense of the most vulnerable, but instead acknowledges our fragile position in this universe and our responsibilities towards it.